Hello and welcome to this video. I came up with the idea of um, making re-EQ a dynamic EQ to be able to DS with it and demut with it. So this was an, was an experiment but uh, it proved really great already in uh, some at some occasions. So I'd like to share it with you. I don't know if you already uh, are familiar with parameter modulation, which can be accessed from here in the plugins menu. Parameter modulation means that a parameter of a chosen plugin, like gain, frequency, any parameter which you can adjust here, can be automatically modulated by an incoming keying signal, side-chaining signal, or by another parameter, or by the level of the audio, or by something else, even by something happening on other tracks. So it's a very complex and interesting feature. And um, what I did is I have five instances of re-EQ. The first two are set up to uh, let through only a certain frequency range and this range is exaggerated, exaggerated a lot. So the first instance exaggerates the high-end sibilance part of the frequencies coming from the track and its routing is set up in a way that it picks up the signal to filter it but then it spits out the signal, filtered signal on channel 3 of that track. So it's a multi-channel track. We can see it here. It sets, it's set to four, four channels. So the second one is the sidechain boom EQ for me, which exaggerates boomy frequency ranges in the source signal and then spits out this filtered signal on tr uh, channel 4 of that track. And behind these sidechaining filters we find an EQ which picks up the exaggerated booming signal. And now we get into the parameter modulation because here the second band, the second band's gain, in fact, is the parameter which is now modulated by the incoming boomy signal. This works by opening the parameter modulation and choose gain of band 2. You get this dialog and you configure that this parameter will react to something you choose here. In my case I wanted it to react to the incoming exaggerated boomy signal from this other EQ on channel 4. You can set attack, release and the volume which has to be detected to make this parameter um, eventually work. And what I'm uh, trying to achieve is that each time there's something boomy in my voice, that what the project is made up of, the gain reacts to the incoming boomy even yeah, boomier guitar, sound coming out of this EQ. And I've placed my and plugin on it. Ducks because it's the signal of encoding and decoding MS stereo. And this EQ and is only uh, uh, existing to create this, this ducking modulation. So at the pro but it's not audible because uh, it's not even routed to an output. It's just creating this modulation. And now the last instance 
picks up this modulation and modulates its second band also. So at what the project is, we see that it's also working on this band and we see that it's also working on its band 3. This is due to the second sidechain modulation EQ instance whose band 3 gain is modulated by the incoming channel 3 of this sidechain high pass instance which spits out very exaggerated high end signals into this one and this one reacts now to the incoming channel 3 and but what the project is modulates its third we have band's gain parameter. New acoustic guitar I received if I new put this to and I've placed the default position, stereo wizard the default location so is very uh, low down there, so we need to put it stereo. into the middle position and also to make it work from the middle, the which is the default default can do this location for an EQ to start. And we can so uh, quite convenient. make it work and negative or positive. Um, the stereo mono switch. Now it's exaggerating so even a mono my siblings. So we want it to work in a negative way, to duck it down. It's a little different of the... And we will see that unprocessed. this modulation, which is not yet audible, because this plugin does not pass audio through, it just creates the modulation from the incoming signal, filtered signal. The last instance, I will make it float here. While well, we see the modulating instance, this one cre creates the modulation. The new acoustic. And this one simply copies you. the same modulation, and I've placed but from all the two instances. Because so it picks up the modulation of this EQ here, and decoding MS this band. Stereo. And translate and it. It can widen the stereo. Translates image. it to its uh, it this own second band. And then it picks up the modulation so of this instance. And I lately added, which is reacting to the high end. Um, the siblings. stereo mono switch. So and so, in fact, in the end, we have listening test right two the bands which are which is, independently is modulated. It's quite funny to observe. A B processed unprocessed feature so how is this modulation set, set up at what we go into the parameter list here and see that it has not only the, the gain acoustic guitar i received from you modulated and i've placed my stereo wizard and in this it. instance it's, it's not modulated by the incoming audio the but by the, the key signal going on it can here in the stereo gain image. of band and it two. Can in fact, I'm here. Non-destructively, I'm here. So it's quite convenient. And uh, it, it picks up this um, um, the sidechain boom switch. modulation EQs can make band two modulation and test right just makes the same it thing. It's a little different of the... We could make it scale uh, 100 percent feature. So or even uh, have an offset at what the project is made up of. But we don't want that. We just we want it to react in the same way. New acoustic guitar I received from you. And also, and I've placed my for um, plugin on it because it's capable of encoding. What I did is I wanted to have this EQ not only take over the modulation of the gain of the two side-chaining EQs, but that I could go into the side-chaining modulation EQs and change, let's say, the frequency the new acoustic guitar I manually. And this is and also translated and, and uh, modulated into the frequency parameter of, of 
encoding the main encoding EQ. EQ. So I can watch where is the peak it can widen frequency the image. and can adjust and can do this, the frequency uh, parameter exactly to where so it's quite it can remove most of the annoying um, frequency. Same goes for much. this so we can instance here. I can test right inside the plugin. Move the frequency which is, is a little different uh, parameter. The, and the I can even processed, change the width also. So everything but the gain which is modulated automatically. What the, the two other parameters I can still we have adjust manually the to make it work I received from you in the desired way. And, I've placed my and this one plugin on it. via several Because parameter modulations for band, for gain, for frequency, for everything. And also it almost. can widen the stereo image. Uh, it does it the same as the side chaining EQ, but this time it works on the audible so audio signal. It's quite convenient and I lately just So let's listen to what it does here. I may um, make them work a little harder. But we might already hear a difference. Let's start here. Without the program EQ working. The new acoustic... The you have this click here, which is high frequency. The new... And if I engage uh, the program EQ... The new it reacts quickly to this spike and removes at least some of the high frequency content. The new acoustic guitar I received from you and I've placed my stereo wizard plugin on it because it's capable of encoding and decoding MS stereo and also it can widen the stereo image It might be, might be subtle because I didn't um, adjust it for this purpose now. So it's quite We could uh, added, still make um, it work. The stereo Sorry. mono switch. Uh, so we can make a mono listening test right. Can make it work, work a little harder. It's, it's a little different of the AB processed, unprocessed feature. So let's start and let's have a look This at one what also. the project is made up of. We have the new acoustic guitar I received from you. So now they are both bands are working a lot more. With that plug-in on it, because it's capable of encoding and decoding MS stereo, and also it can widen the stereo image. And it can do this non-destructively. So it's quite convenient. And I lately added um, the stereo mono switch. So we can make a mono listening test right inside the plugin. So um, I share this uh, chain with you so you can experiment with it. To use it, just load it. And then you need, you could double click uh, to make this float, to have this always visible. And then you need these two, uh, where you can adjust frequency and bandwidth. Gain is of band two here for the boomy one, and band three for the high EQ one. Um, for both, you can choose frequency and bandwidth to adjust to what you need, and gain will be applied automatically. If you need to change the gain, you will have to go into their own uh, FX modulation of band 2 or band 3 here is a little bit more complicated so and then adjust these parameter to 
determine the strength the acoustic guitar I received from by choosing another minimum volume. If you put the minimum volume very high, they won't react at all. Encoding and decoding MS stereo. And also it can widen the stereo image. And it can do this non-destructively. So it's quite convenient. And I lately added... So it's um, a little bit complex. The stereo mono switch. So we can make a mono listening test right inside. The But it works. <laughs> Which is, is a little different of the AB processed, unprocessed feature. In reminiscence of what so I uh, talked about in my last video at what uh, with MS processing. Of um, we if we show the phase we see that this and I've placed my this automated modulation creates some of phase issues and decoding MS stereo as soon as you have only the one once this voice in a mix you won't hear anything it's just if you had a copy of the voice without the same phase shifts going on you would hear something so It's harmless to have these phase shifts. Okay, that's it for now. Bye-bye.